few questions on the reel I just watched. Which one? The one titled Types of Magic. Sure, go ahead. You spoke about the kinds of magic practiced by Dakayana. Mm -hmm. Can you list a few forms of magic not practiced by Dakayana? Absolutely. Um, anything which touches dark magic remotely or openly or uh, indirectly is definitely something that we do not practice or encourage when it comes to Rakhaina and practices by Rakhaina under the umbrella of it. Um, it's very important to remember that when we are talking about dark magic, it basically means that when it's toying around with somebody's free will, when there is some kind of a spell that is cast on somebody that could harm the person and not let them practice free will, when there is any kind of magic uh, which has all the factors that we do not believe in and most importantly if it goes against the rules of Wicca, the rules of the Wiccan Reed, the rules of dragon magic, runic magic, um, apotropaic or protection magic so on and so forth. Could you elaborate on the magical practices Zakaina works with? Sure. We'll go one by one. The first one is eclectic. Eclectic magic is uh, a very commonly used form of magic. It basically means using different kinds of magic and fusing them together. When you infuse magics together, different practices of magics together, something more beautiful comes out. But when it comes out, you have to be sure that one kind of magic complements the other. It doesn't clash. The second one is cosmic. Cosmic magic, what you call divination. In fact, it's much higher than that. You must have heard of cosmic rays. If you haven't, then cosmic magic is magic of the cosmos. So there is a lot of magic which comes from places known and unknown. Each place that it comes from, each celestial order it comes from, and there are many of them, you won't recognize any of them, but an occultist will, will always be channelized with an intention, with a purpose. And that channelizing is very important. The intention is important and of course the purpose is important. And if it is to help, then we definitely accept it. Third, quantum. Quantum, I'm sure you all know about quantum physics, quantum metaphysics, uh, what happened to Schrodinger's cat. Uh, if not, then understand this, that we live on this earth. There are five, there are dimensions. We work with the fifth dimension. We work with the multiverse. The earth is a planet. Right? It's in a solar system. The solar system is part of a galaxy, the galaxy, uh, uh, Milky Way. The Milky Way is part of a, um, you know, uh, of a galaxy. The galaxy is part of a universe and there are several universes. So here we are talking about the theory which is put into practice of creating a situation, a reality that is wanted by the seeker without harming anyone that could erase a part of the past so that it doesn't imprint itself in the present and cause a disaster in the future. Yes, it can be done and we do it. Fourth, elemental. Elemental magic uh, is very, very widely practiced, especially here in the US and uh, in uh, other cultures as well. Um, Scandinavian cultures, uh, Asian cultures, where you have the elements. What are they? Earth, air, fire, water. The fifth is, it could be Wicca, it could be ether, it could be spirit, but using an element for magic is, well, air is for communication, uh, fire is used for spirit, uh, energy, fire is also used for money, water is used for emotions, so on and so forth. Fifth, runic. Runic mag magic or the elder Futhark runes is what we use. So runes used to be what used to be written earlier by the Vikings, the Nords, the Nordic people, the Celts. So they have, uh, for example, if this is what you see, an X, right? That's called Gibo. And Gibo is one of my favorites because it means a gift. So in the olden days, they used to, when people would give things to someone else, uh, say on Yuletide or Christmas, as you all know, they would put an X in the box and that would mean that it's a gift that they're giving Gibo, right? If it's very, if it's, if the wind is very, very icy, then on the ship sails on the sides, they would write 
one line like this I which stands for Isa which means ice so runic magic is very important because it's a direct command of what you want you will you will have you'll see bracelets and rings amulets uh, protection symbols with a lot of runes runic magic is uh, something which has also helped us in uh, creating something which is called ODRM which we use a lot in dragon spells ODRM stands for order of the draco runic magic that's right order of the draco runic magic so this is one of the fusion magics that we have created fifth angelic angelic magic or angel magic is where we use the, the seraphims or the uh, angels the, which the special angels who surround the uh, the throne of god we use uh, the 72 angels of magic we use archangels magic every angel is assigned one job one angel will be assigned a job to say protect your pets one angel will be assigned a job to say uh, ensure that the home is functioning properly one angel will be assigned uh, so that they are able to uh, you know create a good frequency between your job performance and focus and the actual nature of the job so that the the productivity is the best health so on and so forth so angel magic is very diverse but we use a part of it in such a way that it helps us to improve on a seeker's quality as compared to when they came to us chaotic chaos magic is often misunderstood if you see an asterisk uh, you know so it's like this right so it's uh, it's not an asterisk it's an asterisk so an asterisk has and then you you know if you put arrows it's shooting off darts every day, everywhere so there is a point of origin there's a point in the center and there are arrows shooting out everywhere chaos magic is a beautiful form form of magic in which you can collect energy from a high source from a good source all together in the point where you want to hit the target you want to hit somebody's health somebody's relationship somebody's ill state of mind somebody's negative vibe and that's how it works because it disperses it apotropic apotropic magic a p o t r a p a i c apotropic magic is protection magic everybody needs protection you need an armor you're feeling cold you wear a sweater right you're feeling when you go into a battle uh, soldiers used to wear armors knights used to wear armors to protect themselves similarly you need to protect yourself from ill elements from things that are, that could attack you or your loved ones from the outside you even need protection for what you've earned your house your uh, mobile phone your your technical gadgets it could be protection for your vehicle it could be protection from curses protection from uh, black magic uh, or dark magic it could be protection from psychic attacks um, sleep paralysis right anything which is not something you want to attract in your life you want to protect not just for yourself but also for others so apotropic magic is something that we use literally for every spell vedic vedic magic the ved and the puran are something that is part of sanatan dharma something that is part of the hindu culture please remember this is not about religion this is about the beauty of the marriage between knowledge and science and magic right so here we are talking about vedic magic in terms of what all is there in terms of beech mantra in uh, when we talk about vedic magic we talk about the celestial beings and the practices the mantras the chants which are done along with sigils and spell casting symbols and spell casting which is used not just for a hindu seeker i want to clarify that but also for somebody for whom that particular spell will work the best and finally dragon magic dragon magic for all of you who don't know we belong to the sacred uh, the coven of the sacred kinesi uh, there are six of us and uh, we are all sisters in this coven um, and kinesi is the star clan uh, the the dragons who communicate with humans through sacred geometry so this is dragon magic has many forms we follow all forms of dragon magic which work with light 
there is no dark form of dragon magic there is not a single one but there are dragons that you don't call because they are chaotic right so dragon magic is something that we work with the most along with apotropaic magic i think dragon magic is what we work along the most 24 7. explain what you meant by depending on the spell that requires to be cast the magic to match the same is chosen whenever there is a seeker who comes to us unless they choose them the kind of spell that they want themselves we recommend what is the best alternative not just in terms of the result not just in terms of the energy exchange what a normal person calls payment in the occult world it is called energy exchange through currency you're, ex you're exchanging uh, energy right but also in terms of the ability to create a reality that they have come to us for in the first place so if i have to use only one particular kind of magic say runic magic and that's why we created a couple of fusion magics like Uriyaram, i told you right order of draco runic magic we've also created for mind spells um, we have a decor Requisa collection or the dr collection which uses order of um, the order of uh, the ancient kingdom of magic in which there are 20 different uh, kingdoms which we have brought together and we spell cast on that and it's amazing right so remember whenever if you want something to be personalized you must have some kind of a corroborated fusion in what are you bringing out in today's day and age one sort of magic never works it's always a combination Nobody wants to see a single color. Everybody wants a rainbow anyways. How can you accelerate a process or a result like you said? So there are two things here. You have the process and you have the result, right? Till you don't go through the process, you won't get the result. If you want any kind of acceleration, the boost in a speed depends on how much diesel or petrol there is in a car, in a vehicle. Similarly, it depends on the kind of energy that is coming from two sources. One is the person on whom the spell is being cast and two is, in my case, in the case of Rakhine Amin, the spell caster. So once these two energies meet, the level has to be such that if a boost can be given so that, and it can't happen every time. It does happen when it is an urgent case. If it's a surgery, a pregnancy, complicated one, a court case, um, something that requires immediate, you know, uh, an interview that's about to happen say I'm conducting it on Sunday and the interview is on Monday right so these kind of emergency cases is when we do accelerate the process we do accelerate the speed but if we do it on a regular basis there may be times when you yourself are not ready to receive it because you don't have that kind of energy so when you ask me that I need this accelerated it means there is an urgency you require X amount of money so that you can pay off the bank loan and live happily ever after. All this was very interesting, mm. but I have to ask, are there any types of magic that should never be practiced? Um, there are several kinds of dark magic that should never be practiced because guess what? There's no coming back from it. The ones that I would like to list are three. One is uh, body fluids magic. Number two is necromancy and number three is uh, mind control. So when we say body fluids, it also includes blood magic. When we say necromancy, it means basically trying to revive those who have passed on. And uh, the last one is, uh, which one was the last one? Mind control. Mind control. Mind control is what you call vashikaran. To make the person do something that they have no control they don't have a choice but to do it because their mind has been controlled when you mess with somebody else's free will mark my words you have left a little opening in your own personal space because tomorrow the same thing will happen to you and that is the reason why i'm absolutely against it it's against the rules and the laws placed by the universe to play with somebody else's free will, free will and to make them do something that they don't want to do. So these are the questions that uh, I was asked for the types of magic. 
If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave it in the comments below. Thank you and see you at Rakayana.